The following program is rated GE. It is suitable for general family viewing. Hello and welcome to Beyond the Limit. My name is Zainab Mohammed. It's a new year. I hope you enjoyed your holidays here at, at Beyond the Limit. We definitely did. Happy 2024 to you. I hope you're looking forward to uh, the new year. So starting us off this year, we're at Step and Stride Learning Center and we're here with Jane who'll be telling us a little bit about her journey raising her child with autism and also her, what inspired her to start um, Step and Stride. Welcome uh, to the episode and thank you so much for joining us. You can introduce yourself. Thank you for having me. Uh, as I said, my name is Jane Miner and uh, I'm a director at Step and Stride Special Needs Learning Center where we cater to children with uh, neurodiverse conditions. Jen, tell me a little bit about your journey um, raising your son. How was it like? My son Emmanuel, he's now 18, uh, was diagnosed with autism at the age of 18 months. Um, we just went for a normal routine uh, medical checkup, you know, the, to the pedi pediatrician. And uh, the pediatrician noticed that he did not have eye contact. So he, you know, he was just playing with him to see if there are any other conditions or any, any other challenges and told us that uh, he's suspecting that he has autism. Mm -hmm. at, that age, at that time, 2005, we had never heard what autism was. We've never even heard the word. So he told us to go watch a movie called Rain Man. Uh, which we did, and uh, from what we saw, we, 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 we did not want to believe that our child was like that. So we actually uh, dismissed him, and uh, you know, when we told our parents, because that time we were living in the US, so when we called our parents and told them what the doctor, the pediatrician was suspecting, our parents were like, no, you know, our, most children, they don't look, we're Africans, we're not taught to, you know, to have eye contact, so we just, swept it under the rug and we decided let's just continue watching because we were not noticing anything else. He was very playful and uh, we never noticed any, any alarm. So at uh, one, after two weeks, we, we got a knock on the door and it was a social worker who came to see us because uh, in those countries, they report, the doctor will report so that uh, they make sure that the child gets the help that they need. So the social worker worked with us and uh, we went for diagnosis and it was confirmed that he was autistic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So from there we started uh, speech therapy, started occupational therapy and just being very, uh, very attentive to what we were doing with him because we had not noticed that he, he had an obsession to trains. There are these small trains that the, the series is called Thomas and Friends. So he wanted all the trains and he'll just line them up. We thought it was just a, an okay behavior, but we came to realize that it was one of the telltale signs uh, of autism. So we started working on such obsessive behaviors with him and uh, slowly he outgrew some of them. And uh, yeah, and that's, we, we are here now. <laughs> So, um, uh, going through that whole process of accepting and now uh, working through it, of course, um, the, the opportunities and the facilities available in the U.S. is not the same as here. How was it like for you? It was much easier in the U.S., but you feel stigmatized, especially uh, children with autism have meltdowns. So you could be at the supermarket or in church and they start you know, falling on the floor and crying for no reason. So you, you, your child is kind of labeled uh, naughty. Mm -hmm. And uh, most people don't even want to invite you to their homes because you have a naughty child. Mm -hmm. So we, 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 kind, we really had to work with that stigmatization and educate our friends. Uh, we, we did a lot of that because uh, we, we realized if we don't tell them, if we hide him, he's going to you know, we, we won't have even a social life ourselves and even him, he won't be exposed and we really wanted to expose him. We never wanted to shut him in the house. So we, 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 we educated our family, our friends, those who wanted, uh, accepted him as well. 
and uh, we, we, the journey has been better now that he's older because also he has outgrown some of the challenges that he had when he was young. But I think stigmatization from parents, uh, from families, especially those who do not want to accept and they label that it's a curse, uh, that it's a spiritual thing, uh, it can be very tormenting even to the child because the child can be seeing a family member and just seeing, because most families, what they do, they kemea those spirits. Like, let's say they see a child having a meltdown, <laughs> they start rebuking and uh, taunting the child. And it really, uh, it's really disheartening to see that sometimes. Um, coming back here and starting the school, how was that like? And why, why a school? Uh, when we came back to Kenya, we realized that there was such a huge gap in our education system. When we were looking for a school, we, when we went to the public schools, we could, not, uh, we could not see our child there because he was academic. He could learn, but uh, if he's taken to the special, we, we, we noted that if he was taken to a special school, he could be just left doing beadwork and uh, those ADL activities, and yet he was past that. But he had very poor social skills, so he could uh, easily be sidelined. So uh, we, we noticed the gap, and as a family, we decided uh, when we are able, we would like to work with other parents, especially parents of young children, because early intervention is everything. Because I believe the help that, or where my son is, is because of the early intervention that he got when he was younger. And it's not a matter of believing that your child has special needs. It's a matter of working on the challenges that your child is having. Don't uh, be in denial about the challenges. You, can, you, you don't have to label him, but work on those challenges to be able to help them cope in life. So that's why we decided to start a Step and Stride Special Needs Learning Center. We opened our doors uh, this year, and uh, we, we, so far we are working with children with uh, diverse uh, neuro, neurological disorders. And uh, we thank God that this far we, it's been okay. Okay. Uh, I'll take you back a little bit. What inspired the relocation? The relocation to Kenya was, uh, we, we, we wanted Emmanuel to have a very social life. And uh, the activities in the US were limiting that because I have to work, his dad has to work. So it was just him and school and home. While in Kenya, we could have a more flexible, uh, we could have a more flexible lifestyle for him so that he can interact with other family members. Tell me about the school. Um, what are some of the programs you do? Um, how do you identify the children who are joining the school and stuff like that? What happens is that uh, a child has to go through assessment. We refer most of our parents to KISE. Uh, Kenya Institute of Special Learning. Uh, uh, so when they go there, they get an assessment, and that assessment uh, now advises us on how to work with the child. Then we create an individualized education plan for the child, where we work on the, some of the short-term goals that we have set, and uh, we progressively work with the child and the parent so that we can, we, we, you know, we, we, we're on the same board. Uh, we work, we, our school also offers occupational therapy, which is very important for our children because it uh, aids them to develop more fine motor skills and those who are having uh, issues with gross motor skills as well. Uh, when I talk of fine motor skills, they are children who are not able to hold a pencil, so they work on that to be able to assist them uh, yeah, to be able to write. You talked about gaps uh, that you noticed in the education system in terms of children with special needs. Um, I'm sure affordability of such services such as speech therapy and stuff like that, you've seen it's something, it's a big issue. From where you sit, what can you say about that as a parent who is raising a child with autism? Affordability, in t when, we, when you talk about our children, uh, is <laughs> most parents are struggling because first of all most of our kids especially those with autism are on diets mm -hmm. that can be very expensive they're on medication that can be also very expensive and uh, now when we talk about speech therapy mm -hmm. 
it's also another added expense mm -hmm. and uh, occupational therapy. So I would, uh, we always encourage the government to help parents with children with special needs to be able to access such services, uh, even through the, 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 the public hospitals at an affordable cost. Because even if a public hospital is charging 500 and a child needs to go twice a week, that's a thousand per week. So for most parents, it's not affordable for them. Uh, at Step and Stride, what we have done, we, we are trying to make our school a one-stop shop for, our, for those children with uh, uh, sp uh, learning disabilities. We, we offer occupational therapy because we realize that most parents don't have time, even if you can afford, they don't have time to take the kids to the therapy sessions. And we offer, we have uh, speech therapists who come also to the school and work with the learners. And we also have behavior, modifi uh, behavior modification uh, aides who come also to the school and work with our learners. So when we, we decided to put everything under one so that most parents, some of them don't even know that a child needs speech therapy. So we kind of work with them and uh, guide them in the process. Yeah. yeah. What is the aim for Step and Stride in this particular area? Our aim is to make sure that all children with special needs have access to education. We want to uh, ensure that also parents are empowered and uh, they are able to also work and support their children because we believe that all, learn, all children with special needs have a, have a purpose in life and they can be helped by their parents uh, to achieve that. Uh, before we take a break, any message to uh, parents who have, are having uh, difficulties accepting um, the kind of diagnosis you got mm -hmm. 18 years ago? What I would like to tell uh, my fellow parents is that uh, it is not easy, especially when you're newly diagnosed. Uh, it, the, the, <laughs> it feels dark, it seems dark, but there's light at the end of the channel. If anyone would like us to work with them, they can come to Step and Stride Special Needs Learning Center and we would be happy to assist them. If they are looking for a school, because I know that's one of the challenges, because if they go to the mainstream schools, they are required to have a shadow teacher, which is also very costly. But at Step and Stride, we work with the, with the parents and our, 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 our system is built in a way that we are able to handle the, the children here because our ratio to student uh, is very low. Yeah. So we'd encourage them to reach out to us. They can email us uh, at info at stepnstride at uh, .co.ke or call us at 0702-006-195. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jane. Um, we'll take a short break. Do not go away because we'll be coming back with a teacher at Step and Stride who'll be telling us about the curriculum they use here. Welcome back. Mwalimu, thank you so much for joining us. I'll allow you to introduce yourself. Asante, thanks for having me. I'm Kangede Alex, a special needs teacher at Step and Stride Special Needs Center. Can you tell me about the curriculum? The curriculum uh, starts from assessment. That is where the assessment is done and learners are placed as per their conditions. As we have different neurodiverse uh, disorders. Now, when the learners are, are being tested, and the medical, the one who ascertain which condition these learners uh, uh, suffer from, we place them in the uh, foundational. In foundational uh, stage, that is where we introduce learning to them, and that is where we gauge the, the way they grasp the ideas, the teaching experience, that is where the, start, uh, the educational journey starts. After there, we are able to know uh, which kind of learning experience or method that will be do best to different learners. And from there is where we place them in the intermediate. And intermediate, this is where basically learning, uh, learning begins. And at this level, learners, uh, the teaching areas that we teach them are in religious, social skills, the daily activities of daily living. And from there, after the learners are able to, uh, are able to undergo that 
uh, that process, they are tested by the by NEC, and after there we pre, uh, they are placed in the pre-vocational. This is where the voca uh, vocational activities are introduced to these learners, which are examples like bakery, farming, uh, animal husbandry, carpentry, uh, all kind of woodwork, welding, and uh, at this level we are able to uh, to notice the interests of different learners. And after we introduce all these activities to them, we are able to know which learner do uh, which thing uh, best. And from there is where they are, they are introduced to vocation. Uh, to, to vocation. Where if a learner was interested, for example, in tapestry, the learner will now do best and will major in that activity, which maybe later in life will be the source of income for that particular learner. And that is all the, the curriculum journey of these uh, special needs learners. How is it like working with children with um, special needs, especially learning abilities? Mm, it is very ni nice. For a teacher, it just needs passion, it just needs resilience and patience mm -hmm. because they don't grasp ideas as compared to the other learners. So for a teacher, it needs resilience and passion so that they can be able to, to, uh, to get whatever you are teaching. Yeah. What are the key components of ensuring that a learner with a learning disability succeeds in the education system? It is the ratio as to which we approach these learners. Uh, for, here, uh, for this school we use a ratio of one teacher to ten kids so that you can be able to deliver to them. Because the more you have a lot of learners, you know every learner is different from the other for these uh, uh, special learners uh, for, uh, as per the degree of severity. So you can't hold more than 10 uh, for you to have an effective class. So we, we try to reduce the number of learners per, uh, learners per, uh, per teacher so that you can be able to deliver and, uh, and see those learners, uh, they have to succeed. How do, you measure, how do you measure the milestones for the different learners? We set the goals. Others are timely, others are short term, and others are long term. And we work together with the other stakeholders like the OT and the uh, speech therapist to see how we can achieve these goals. Hi, Emmanuel. Hi. How, how are you? I'm doing okay. Okay. Glad, good to see you. It's good to see you too. <laughs> this fine afternoon. Okay. So, t can you introduce yourself, Emmanuel? Yes. My name is Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. I am diagnosed with autism. And I am, um, I am 19 years old. Ah, good. Okay, Emmanuel, what do you enjoy about school? Me? Mm. I do, I learn, I study and read and write mm. and I play, I do computer things and so on. Is there a subject that is your favorite? Anything, anything at all, like math, history, science, I mean biology, English, history, and so uh, music and so on. Okay, okay. What would you like to be when you grow up? Graphic animator, a graphic animator and a pilot. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Wish you all the best. Thank you, madam. Hi, Jeremy. Hi, I'm Zainab. How are you? I'm good. Okay. Can you introduce yourself? Uh, hi, my name is Jeremy Kanyare Gashugi. Mm -hmm. I am 15 years old mm -hmm. and I love and I love step and stride so much. Okay. Uh, do you have a favorite subject in school? Yes, English. Okay. How, how, is, your ex how is your experience um, being in a special needs school compared to being in the normal school? Uh, it's good. You see, I started going to school, but when I started going to school, I went to a regular school. You see, 11 years ago, in 2012, I went, I started going to school, okay. but when I started school, I went to regular school. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, for 11 years, mm -hmm. I have been in regular school. Okay. And being in regular school? Uh, so, yes, it was bad. Mm -hmm. I kept on being beaten up by teachers, not doing the work, not knowing things. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would just... I would just refuse to go to school. Yeah, I would pretend I have sickness. Okay. Yeah. 
My dad said, Jeremy, there's this nice school I want to take you to. Mm -hmm. Then I was like, what nice school? Then my dad was like, you may never know, it's a surprise. Mm -hmm. So he just kept on going. So when I came here, I went to see the mad, uh, I went to the reception, then Chef Judy came and served us some tea. Then I went to the madam. Mm -hmm. Then, then I talked to her. Then I was like, "What is your name?" Mm -hmm. Then her, she said, "Her name is Mrs. J, Madam Jing." Mm -hmm. And then she was like, "Would you? I'm the madam of this school. Would you like to come to this school?" Then I was like, "Yes. What type of school is this?" Then she said, "This is a special needs school, and we would like for you." To uh, and uh, uh, and it's also for second and it's also for big people like you, for example, secondary and above. Mm -hmm. Also for primary and then the kinder the nursery the kindergarten house. So I was like, oh really? I I, I was I would love to come to this school. It would be nice to come to this school. Mm -hmm. Then he was like, yes, I want boarding. It's my first time being in boarding. Mm -hmm. Then I came to boarding. Mm -hmm. And then... And then... After... And then, and then I agreed, let me, yes, let me come to this school. So I came to the school. And, it, and all of this is all thanks to my grandmother at home. I, and and Shoshoneri, I would like to say I love you. Mwah. Thank you for this opportunity. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed the show. I hope you've been able to learn from Jane, from um, Alex, and also from um, Emmanuel and Jeremy, who've talked to us about their experience um, here in school. Um, until next time, goodbye. I've been your host, Zainab Mohammed. <laughs>